This morning, Secretary of State John Kerry is working with world leaders in Paris to address climate change. One focus of the talks is finding new sources of energy. Mark Phillips went to a remote coastal town in Scotland where one of the newest ideas in renewable energy comes from the oldest of sources. He's in London with the final entry in his series, The Climate Diaries. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Charlie. Well, a lot of the talk at the Paris conference is of the need to develop new clean energy technologies. Wind and solar power we know about, but they're not enough. Now there's a new kind of power that's about to come on stream, and it may be part of the answer, the power of the oceans. Until now, the pounding waves along this part of the north coast of Scotland have been largely left to the local population of seals. But lately, the seals have had company, engineers. The conditions are finally ripe to start tapping the immense energy potential of the oceans. And the world's most ambitious tidal project is well underway here. Already, a network of cables have been laid on the sea floor. Soon, the first underwater turbines will be lowered into position, where the massive tidal forces will turn their rotors and make electricity. David Taff is the site project manager. The Atlantic's that way. Yeah. The North Sea's that way. Correct. Yeah. And the tide runs back and forth here. Correct. Four times a day, twice in each direction. Yeah. The tidal currents on this bit of coast, called the Pentland Firth, are ferocious. The Atlantic tide rushes through the channel as it forces its way to the North Sea, and then, when the tide turns, it rushes back again. The plan is for a full field of turbines to be installed on the seabed, where they will produce as much power as a conventional shoreside coal, gas, or nuclear-fired plant. Speaking as an engineer, do you find it kind of amazing that this power source has been sitting out there? Yeah, it is, it's a good point. It's a, it's a wonder uh, people, haven't, people haven't looked at this, um, this site and other sites like it before. The tidal plant, its backers say, will not suffer from the pitfalls of other renewable sources. Solar power only works when the sun shines, so not at night. And wind farms only work when the wind blows, which it isn't here. Tidal has one very distinct benefit. Uh, it's virtually 100% predictable. And, says Tim Cornelius, CEO of the company building the new tidal plant, there's another advantage. Unlike wind farms, which are criticized for spoiling the view on land or for being hazards to shipping at sea, with tidal... You don't see it and you don't hear it. It's very environmentally benign. That there's been power in the oceans has always been known. The tidal currents move back and forth here like clockwork. The trick has been to develop technology as reliable as the tides, and that, the developers say, is where we are now. The technology, however, is expensive right now, about twice the cost of wind generating power. But costs, the backers say, will come down quickly because tidal is adapting technology already used in the wind and the offshore oil industries. The best sites around the world are yet, uh, yet to be developed. And so we'll have a, a real boom over the next 10 to 15 years of uh, sites around the world being developed. Among the North American sites being looked at, the Bay of Fundy off Nova Scotia, where the world's strongest tides run. And on the west coast, San Francisco Bay and the famous tidal race under the Golden Gate Bridge. The Paris conference is now moving into the critical deal or no deal stage. And with three days to go, it's still dealing with one essential issue, carbon emissions. How to cut them back, and Nora, who's going to pay for that? Yes, that's always the always clincher. Question. Mark, thank you. I great think series, Mark. Great yes. series, and very important for us to harness the air, the sun, mm -hmm. and the ocean in mm -hmm. order to generate clean energy. Absolutely. Yeah. As All we right. look for new sources. As we look for new sources.